The following opinions are solely those of Botest.com and its test captain. Hi, Cap Steve for Botest.com, and today we're going to inspect and test Intrepid Powerboat's largest center console to date, the Intrepid 475 Panacea. She's also one of the first boats we've tested with the new Yamaha 425s in a quad rig. Pushing 47 feet 6 inches of motor yacht through the water takes a lot of power. Our test boat was powered by four Yamaha 425 horsepower engines for a total of 1,700 horsepower. The 475 stern provides a full 8 inches of walkway forward of the engine wells. Note the clean installation with all connections in one tube and no C-Star steering arms impeding the engine tilt. The walkway is accessible by steps down at each side. The starboard step has a flush mounted deck filler for 25 gallons of diesel fuel to run the 8 kilowatt Fisher Panda generator that comes as part of the standard package. 12 kW upgrade is available as an option. The shore power plug is located above the port side step. Our test boat had an optional shore power upgrade to 50 amps from 30 amps. Take a look at this stern anchoring system. The anchor rests on a roller that's built into a swim step. Disconnect the safety line and feed out the anchor road from the anchor locker that's accessible from inside the cockpit. Retrieve the anchor right back into the roller. Intrepid provides two options for securing dock lines and fenders. Along the top side of the gunnel just forward of the transom on both sides and a pop-up cleat and hose hole in the deck protected by an anti-chafing stainless steel ring to a hull mounted cleat inside the cockpit. 13 feet 8 inches of beam makes for a lot of cockpit real estate. Intrepid expects boat buyers to design that space according to their individual needs so there really isn't a standard configuration. Our test boat had a simple fold-out bench seat along the aft edge of the cockpit. Another boat might have racks for scuba tanks or fishing gear, live bait tanks, additional seating, or tables. Our test boat had an optional cockpit cover sunshade that's extremely handy for dockside shelter or shielding people from the sun while drifting or anchored. With outboard engines, space under the deck is free for some enticing options for storage. Hinged guttered cockpit hatches allow easy access to the entire space below the cockpit. Opening the hatch just forward of the transom reveals a compartment divided by the boat's transom bracing. It houses some of the boat's important plumbing components including a bilge pump, raw water intake, water separator fuel lines, fuel shutoff valves, and engine fuel primers. All hoses are double clamped. In this boat, the forward centerline compartment houses the Seakeeper stabilizing gyro. An ice maker and rollout fridge behind the second row of seating are optional. No Intrepid cockpit would be complete without its signature side door. Intrepid invented the concept a dozen years ago and now it's been embraced by much of the industry. The door can be used for dockside boarding, and the fold-up powder-coated reboarding ladder couldn't be handier or easier to deploy. The distance from the aft cockpit sole to the top of the gunnel cap is 29 inches. Rather than dragging a step stool around the cockpit, a two-level step folds out of a hidden compartment just forward of the dive door to provide safe, easy access to the gunnel. Moving forward, identical deck hatches on both sides of the seating console provide some valuable storage space. The Panacea makes excellent use of the wide gunnels with fold-out storage bins and more underdeck storage. On the port side of the seating console is a drawer for Plano tackle boxes. There are a total of four 10-inch pop-up cleats on each side, even though the deck fillers are flush mounted. Intrepid chooses to hide them under hinged doors. Notice how the access door matches the contour of the gunnel cap. The gunnel height amidships is 43 inches above the deck, creating plenty of room for rod storage as well as security offshore when conditions get sloppy. All of the deck hatches have gutters around the edges that drain overboard. The entire cockpit is self-bailing. The 475 has a white powder-coated rail inboard of the cabin top. Another hallmark of Intrepid is its intricate and costly fiberglass contours, reliefs, soft radius corners, and toe kicks. They're all created simply to make the boat look more pleasing to a connoisseur's eye. The double sun pad forward of the helm station measures 4 feet 3 inches across and a full 6 feet long. Each side has four position tilt up backrest. A round opening deck hatch sits between the backrests. The hardtop in this 475 Panacea is spread to nearly the full beam of the boat, and Intrepid has chosen to support this massive hardtop with swept back supports affixed to the gunnels. This limits working fish to the aft cockpit, which is undoubtedly why it's so large and unencumbered. This top is another area where the customer can choose from a wide range of options. For example, Intrepid will configure the boat with an arch, a conventional T-top, a full tower, half tower with full upper station, or almost anything else a buyer can dream up. A forward-facing bench seat lies just forward of the cabin top sun pad. In the bow is the circular seating for up to eight people and a retractable table. 
When the table goes down, insert cushions pop in to create another larger sun pad. A manually operated pedestal comes standard. Cap-mounted beverage holders that double as rod holders sit above the circular seating. A double door anchor locker with full stainless steel hardware and gas spring lift supports take advantage of the space beyond the bow seating. An optional freshwater wash down in the anchor locker comes in handy for keeping salt and mud off the ground tackle. Our test boat had the optional Muir windlass. A 10 inch cleat mounted inside the locker provides a convenient and secure attachment point for the anchor road. Our boat had windlass controls in the anchor locker and at the helm station. We measured 3 feet 10 inches from the waterline to the gunnel cap at the stern. The same measurement at midships is about a foot higher at 4 feet 11 inches. By the time you get to the bow, the freeboard measures 5 feet 10 inches, a full 2 feet higher than in the stern. Our test boat was so new that Intrepid had yet to install all of the boat's electronics. The instrument panel is 4 feet 7 inches across and 1 foot 4 inches high. The forward display panel has more than enough space to mount two 24 inch screens or three 15 inch displays. The tilt wheel is placed on the center line in front of the middle captain's chair. Placement and selection of most control panel components will depend on the options a buyer selects and his placement decisions. In this case, he chose to place the Yamaha control binnacle to the right of the wheel and the Hellmaster joystick and bow thruster control to the left of it. A clearly labeled, well laid out operator's electrical panel occupies an angled space to the left of the wheel. Both sides of the dash panel have locking storage compartments. The Ritchie mechanical compass sits right above the wheel at eye level where it can be most useful. The 475 is equipped with a 5 foot 5 inch wide by 3 foot 5 inch high tempered glass windshield. A single iron pantograph windshield wiper clears rain and spray. The center section curves fairly significantly at the sides but we found zero distortion. The helm has a two row seating plan that fills the area between the helm console and the cockpit. First row, triple stid slimline low back admiral high helm seats with bolsters, armrests and integrated footrests come as standard equipment. The middle captain seat comes with an electric up down control. The second row of three seats were identical fixed stid seats with bolster and armrests. The owner of this boat opted for the Shockwave S5 marine suspension system to enhance comfort when riding in rough water at high speed. During our test, even though it was not particularly rough, the Shockwave S5 seats added a welcome comfort level. This system added a noticeable pressurized resistance to the cushion that will clearly make a difference when in heavy seas. A sliding hatch down the starboard side of the cabin provides access below, four steps down. Details like the shape of the hatch and the design of the locking handle help make the 475 Panacea both beautiful and safe. The cabin height is 6 feet 6 inches just beyond the bottom step. To the immediate right, a handrail provides security at a place where a lot of people need stability. The Teak and Holly Soul comes standard. The galley is located along the wall directly across from the companionway stairs. Countertops in the galley and head are made of Corian. The undermounted galley sink and flush mounted electric cooktop make it easier to keep the countertop clean. All the drawers in the cabin have bloom hardware and are lined with stainless steel. The microwave comes as part of the standard equipment package and the cedar line hanging locker is under it. All cabinetry is finished with high gloss varnish. Two windows above the galley provide natural light. Find more storage under the window. A refrigerator, a dinette that seats five, is located forward of the galley. An electrically actuated motor lowers the table. Fill in the table section with cushions to create a V-berth. Intrepid provides new owners with bedspreads and pillow shams. The private head compartment with separate shower is located at the bottom of the companionway stairs to the left. The toilet is electrically powered. An electric water heater delivers hot water to the galley sink, head sink, and separate shower stall. The 475 has a freshwater capacity of 130 gallons. The right-hand mirror opens to reveal the main electrical panel, a clever use of space there. Now let's take the 475 Panacea out for a sea trial. Since Intrepid does not weigh its boats, and every boat they build is different, we have no test weight data. Our test boat was powered by four Yamaha 5.6 liter V8 XTO engines developing 425 horsepower between 5,000 and 6,000 RPM. Our test boat was fitted with 21 inch by 16 and 3 8 inch three bladed props. We recorded a top speed of 60.7 miles per hour at 6100 RPM. Best Cruise came in at 3500 RPM where she averaged 30.4 miles per hour, burned 43 gallons per hour, getting 0.7 miles per gallon for a range of 437 statute miles. All while still holding back a 10% reserve of the boat's 700 gallon total fuel capacity. In acceleration tests, we recorded zero to planing time in 5.3 seconds, zero to 20 miles per hour in 6.5 seconds, and continued through 30 miles per hour in 10 seconds flat. 
She has a 21 and a half degree dead rise at the transom. So when we hit the waves we had available, and to no one's surprise, she gave us a solid stable ride. All that freeboard at the bow means it will take a pretty agitated sea state to throw any spray back on people in the boat. The four props and the bottom shape enable the Panacea to grip turns like a boat half its size and still be nimble. Thanks to the Yamaha Hellmaster joystick system and the bow thruster, docking this 47-foot boat was a non-issue, even in a slip with a tight cross current. Performance, handling, comfort, and quality of build, they all come together on the 475 Panacea from Intrepid. And that's our full inspection and performance evaluation. For BoatTest.com, I'm Captain Steve. We'll see you on the water.